Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We're back on the Schroll 32 Coupe. So, today is the day, well, hopefully, uh, that I'm going to mock up and work on motor mounts and transmission mounts for the uh, Oldsmobile engine and LaSalle transmission that we are putting into the Schroll Coupe. Uh, as a reminder, Larry had this car mocked up with an Oldsmobile engine in it when we found the car, and that was kind of his uh, dream was to put an Olds engine in it and uh, we're kind of continuing on with that and navigating the history of this car to make it something neat that is kind of honoring the past of this car. So uh, I've been working on gathering a bunch of parts for this car and this engine set up uh, for you know over a year now. Well, basically a year since I've gotten the car. And uh, I think I have all the right pieces that we can mock everything up. Got this Oldsmobile engine that is a 324 uh, that was kind of a like refreshed engine at one point that was pulled to put a more hopped up engine in. Um, so it's a good engine that we're gonna use for a mock-up. And I have some LaSalle transmissions uh, laying around that we're gonna mock up with a 50 Olds bell housing. And we'll show you guys all the little bits and pieces that it takes to put this stuff together. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, we'll have the engine and trans sitting in the frame and, and see how it looks. All right, so this engine was, like I said, it was going through at some point and refreshed. And uh, it's a, you know, from what everything I could tell, it's a pretty darn clean engine. Now this was running an automatic before and I've already gone ahead, ahead and taken out the flex plate. So that's gone and we are ready to mount up uh, a flywheel. So um, what I've got here is an old aluminum flywheel. I believe I got this from a viewer that we were chatting on the phone about. Oldsmobile and Cadillac stuff and, and LaSalle transmissions and all that. And uh, he mentioned he had a good aluminum flywheel for a 53 to 6 Olds, which this is like a 54, I think. Um, and these aluminum flywheels sometimes get a bad rap. I see a lot of the Facebook groups that sometimes can uh, be a little difficult to read through. Uh, I think there's some information that's been passed down through the ages that uh, is not real world uh, stuff that people are just um, regurgitating things they've read on the internet or they've heard hearsay. So aluminum flywheels are great for lightweight cars. So we are building a lightweight hot rod. Great because the engine revs up quicker and because it's a lighter car, um, it isn't so bad with pulling out. When you have a lightened flywheel, uh, because the reciprocating mass is lower, the engine does rev up quicker, but uh, it can be more difficult to pull out where it may want to stall the engine. You have to give it a little more uh, throttle to get our, uh, the clutch to slip and, and pull out. So if you have a big Olds, Oldsmobile, like they, you know, this engine would have come in, yes, putting a aluminum flywheel in it is kind of a pain in the ass to drive the car around, but I put aluminum flywheels in like all of these little cars that I put together and I really like them. It, it makes the engine rev up a lot quicker. So for everyday drive, driving like light to light around town, back roads, uh, you actually, I think, feel a difference because the engine does rev up a bit quicker than using the original big heavy flywheel that would come on all these old V8 engines. So um, I, I really like them. I think it's a personal preference thing. It really isn't that bad um, to drive in my opinion, but then again, I'm used to driving this old junk, so uh, maybe I'm, I'm not the best one to answer that. But, so I'm putting a little flywheel on this. I think it's uh, pretty cool and it will, it also kind of was not that expensive. So I got this flywheel on. I'm just gonna throw this on uh, more for, for size and everything. I don't know if I have all the clutch parts laying around, but I wanted to get that um, old flex plate off. We'll throw this guy on there and then eventually we'll be getting a brand new clutch uh, disc and, and, um, and uh, pressure plate and all that stuff. So I'm gonna get this on and then what we're gonna be doing is uh, bolting up the lower bell housing section on these Oldsmobiles and the Cadillacs, they have this lower bell, bell housing section that un unbolts. So we'll bolt this up after we get the flywheel on and then we can uh, get to putting the 50 Olds bell housing on, which is somewhere over there and we'll show you that in a minute. Um, so this is kind of the combination needed to do to put a LaSalle on. You have to put the, you know, use the stock lower bell housing. If you're in some of these uh, Fords, depending on the car, um, you may need to swap the starter over. So there's starter changeovers for these, super easy to, to swap over. This car had the engine in it with, um, without a starter changeover. So I'm hoping it's okay, I'm hoping. So we will see with that. So I'm gonna get these all bolted up and then we can kind of keep moving along here and uh, try and get this transmission bolted up so we can slide this sucker in there.
All right, so we got our engine and trans hanging, got the LaSalle on there, everything uh, went together okay. Um, and I took the mounts, these are like her style mounts that came off of the uh, engine that was in the coupe when we got it. So I took them off, had to pull the crank pulley to get uh, the one bolt on the bottom of each of those out. So grab that off, luckily that came off okay, and we put the mounts back on and uh, we got everything hanging. I also mounted back up the shocks with these little plates that Larry had put in back when he was younger and had this thing. And uh, we're gonna lift this guy up, slide it back and see where it lands in the chassis. Um, I'm gonna grab a couple of biscuit mounts and just throw them on there uh, to set that on, on um, those and uh, we should be pretty good. So I'm gonna lift this up and slide it back. All right, so I got the engine and trans sitting in place. I've been fiddling around with getting um, everything to kind of sit close to level. So I wanted to show you guys before I get too in depth here with uh, making the mounts and everything and drilling holes like we're gonna do here shortly. Um, I wanted to show you guys where we're at. So uh, we got the engine in, it was sitting down and everything landed like really sweet. Um, this thing just fit in just right. Um, we were. We were able to take the grill out and basically like hook the the uh, the trans in. So I know it's hard to tell, but there's actually a bit of space in between the um, in between the uh, sub rails that I built and the trans. Um, what I like about that and what I was hoping to have happen is I was really hoping I could keep this flat. So it pretty much keeps a flat floor in the car that'll look sort of original if you want to say that but we won't have some big huge tunnel the other thing that's nice about the 37 lasalle or any of the lasalle boxes are that they're they're really flat right here on top um, so that we barely need to make a tunnel just a little hump that's probably not much more than a 32 would have had originally and then up at the firewall of course we'll have to do something for uh, where this is all notched out but i'm really happy that we could we don't need to have some like huge tunnel that's going to that's going to steal foot space in the car and we can hook this underneath the here and this is landing pretty good now the problems we're having um, currently that we're trying to figure out i need to figure out is down below which is going to be really hard to see but um, down below like right here there is it's basically sitting on this um, this crossbar here uh, right on one of the bolts so it's just sitting right on that. Um, and we have some room underneath at this cross member, but not a lot. And what is gonna kind of cause some modification is um, to get the engine to sit level, we had to bring the front, you either need to bring the, the trans, the tail shift down, or we need to bring the motor mount up. So just the, the easiest solution just to sort of get it close to level was to bring it up. Um, and we basically just, for now, stack two of these biscuit mounts. Now, I don't love that look. Um, it does get the, uh, the crank pulley up above that little splash pan so we wouldn't have to cut that all out, which is kind of nice. Um, so it's kind of a, 
you know, one of those things where we're, we're gonna have to kind of make a compromise. But this is sitting pretty close to level right here um, with the weight of the body. When we put that on in the back, that's gonna bring the back end of the car down just a little bit and we'll probably make this like darn near perfect. Um, and it should work out pretty well. I just think that I'm going to wanna maybe modify in here, just notch this down or heat and clearance this down a little bit, which is what they probably did originally. Um, and then what we can do is I can build a little mount right off this cross member here that just comes out uh, off of there. And then we can use the stock LaSalle um, style mounting here that has these two bolts and there's basically a biscuit mount. I have it somewhere. Shop's a mess right now. Here we go. This is the stock LaSalle mount and this mounts kind of like this and there's a stud and almost every one of these, if you ever see one, uh, a stock LaSalle mount, the stud is always torched off because in the junkyard it was way easier to just torch that off than to uh, loosen it. So we'll have to put a new stud in that. But this mount will sit down in like this and if we build a little bracket, all we need to do is drill a hole for the stud to go through and the, you know we'll put another biscuit mount on it and that can sit down. So that should work out pretty well. Um, I've just got to stand here and make the decision if I want to modify these cross members more to get the tail shaft to drop even more so that we can get rid of um, one of these biscuit mounts or not. Um, the only thing is the radiator is sitting or the, where the fan would be is sitting. It's just above uh, center of the radiator. Um, but because this radiator and, and grill is channeled down, um, it's just above. If we, if we didn't have this grill sitting so well, it probably would have had to be even, um, it would actually be probably centered. So I need to stare at this a little more. I'm not sure. I'm going to make the executive decision really soon here. But as it's sitting, it looks really good. I'm kind of psyched on it. Um, I think it looks fast already. So I'm going to work on, uh, you know, just moving some stuff around and figure it out. And I'm going to probably rate first thing first, I'm going to probably make this mount to come off of here. Cause no matter what the, uh, the, the length that it needs to be off of this crossbar is going to stay the same. It's just a matter of how high I put it, depending on where we land this tail shaft at, uh, to get the engine and trans sitting nice and level. So, or the car sitting level rather. So, uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to start doing some moving around and see if we can get this thing bolted down real soon.
right, so I had to do a ton of cleaning up. I made a giant mess around the shop. I had tools thrown everywhere and just stuff all over the place. And uh, trying to do this job by myself was definitely uh, quite a chore, but I got everything in. I got all the holes drilled and the mounts in and everything kind of bolts in place like we wanted to. Uh, a couple of things I was fighting was trying to get the engine to sit uh, fairly level was kind of a chore because I'm working around the rear, all these cross members that were in the frame already. I kind of cleaned them up as you guys remember and I'm trying to like embrace that old work and just make it safe. Um, so really the trans needed to be dropped to, to get it to sit how I wanted it exactly. Trans needed to be dropped down quite a bit. Now what you saw in the video is I was heating and hammering and kind of and stretching that uh, center cross member section uh, back there, trying to get that to drop down enough that I could get the trans to drop down. And I got it to drop down quite a bit, but it still wasn't, wasn't quite enough. And without really like chopping all those cross members out and totally redoing them, I think it's at a sweet spot now. I had to just basically put um, another little rubber spacer in the front, rubber motor mount uh, on top of the biscuit mount to get the top, front of the engine up a little bit. Um, and it's right in the ballpark. I got the bubble level on the center carb and it's it's just outside, you know, half the bubbles in in the center. Pretty darn close, but we got to remember that we're going to be putting a body back on here. Uh, we're going to be putting a gas tank, interior, you know, all that stuff in the car um, that's going to actually drop the rear end just a little bit. So I think it'll be okay. It's, it's right in the ballpark, but mainly I wanted to get all these bolt holes drilled so that we can just slide this engine and trans um, into the car and uh, we can continue to move forward. Now, one of the things I'm really happy about that I made work, it's, um, I made the executive decision. So I ended up leaving this, uh, this center cross member that I, or a center section of sub rails. I was able to fit the trans right underneath of there and, uh, and keep the floor flat right there. I was a little worried I was gonna have to put a tunnel there, but it actually worked out pretty good. Um, now, it, it's gonna require basically, and these cars are like that really when you're putting these, these big engines and little cars. If I ever need to pull the trans, I'm really gonna have to pull the whole engine and trans in one shot because you can't pull it backwards. The only way that this is all going out is front. But really that's how all of them are. My, my Model A Coupe, the Pagoda City Coupe, I had, a, I had an issue with the flywheel on that thing when I first put it together. I had to pull the whole engine in trans because it was way easier to do it that way. So we have these cars that are channeled and lowered and, and you know, modified like this, it's a lot to fit in one space. So I decided to do it that way because you can actually just kind of hook it right underneath. There's plenty of space, I can fit my hand under, in between there. So it is perfect. And what that's gonna do is give me very minimal tunnel that I'll need to make like a hump in the tunnel. Really it'll just be a little one right here where the, uh, where the trans is, but it's not gonna really be much more than a factory 32 would have. So really, really happy with all that, how everything sits. Uh, the other stuff that's really nice is, um, the factory oil filter fits in here. Uh, the factory starter will fit in the factory location, which is kind of hard to do on these cars. Usually they, you have to flip, a, get a starter changeover on the Oldsmobiles and get the starter over here and relocate the oil filter. But the way everything kind of jives, it actually works out pretty good. So I think we can rock and roll like this. Now, obviously the exhaust manifold on this side is like jammed against the frame here. It's, you know, it's, there's like an eighth inch between the frame. I'm not gonna be using these. We're gonna be building some kind of stainless headers or something for this thing. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'm actually gonna probably pull these off soon. Um, I just had them on there because it was how I was lifting the engine, was wrapping it around the, uh, the exhaust manifolds. So yeah, everything's in, I'm really happy. Uh, now I basically, the next big step is to bring the body back out um, of storage and slide it back down over this thing and figure out what I'm gonna do for all the mounts to attach the sub rails I made to the body. So that's why I was trying to get this engine and trans in ASAP because I need to get the engine trans in so we can get the body all sitting. I wanna make sure that the, you know, where I have the engine sitting is good and everything will work okay. And then we can slide it down and get the body and sub rails bolted in and get the body, you know, sturdy again and then we can start on body work. So this thing's moving along pretty quickly, surprisingly. It's nice when you gather parts and you don't have to make everything from scratch. It goes a lot quicker. So that's all I have for this one. Appreciate you guys following along. Um, yeah, it's gonna be on the road in no time. Thanks guys, catch you later.